Hey, good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. It is Thursday now, the 25th of September, 2025. Very glad you tuned into today's video because we have to talk about this potential now of a hurricane in my neck of the woods, the southeast United States, the Carolinas in particular. And we're not talking about a week or 10 days plus out into the future. This could come together in pretty short order. By the way, it's not from Umberto or Gabrielle, of course. We're talking about Invest Area 94L, and that is going to be the subject of most of today's update. So let's get started. First of all, National Hurricane Center homepage. Here are the different players. There's Gabrielle headed toward the Azores and then Northwest Africa. I'll show you on the interactive map from our site in just a moment. There's Umberto. This is going to be a major hurricane at some point and probably a very strong hurricane at that. And this will have impacts by way of some big swells, rough surf, and then you combine that with this. And now the National Hurricane Center does explicitly mention the Southeast United States. That last sentence, interests along the coast of the Southeastern United States should also monitor the progress of this system. And that includes, obviously, the Turks and Caicos and the island of Hispaniola, uh, Florida, even the east coast of Florida with some indirect impacts. Boy, it's going to be a busy several days ahead. So looking at the track map here off the Hurricane Track Insider site, there's Gabrielle. Just want to show you this real quick. Going to go through the Azores and then eventually turning south and east, coming back into the continent of Africa, the leftovers anyway. That's where it got started as a tropical wave came out into the Atlantic did its thing, and now it's sitting up over here. Pretty wild stuff. There is Umberto well on its way to becoming a hurricane in the next day or so, and a pretty potent hurricane at that. And uh, what's not on the map here, we don't show invest areas on our maps just yet, but uh, 94L is sitting down here. And then over in the East Pack, might as well throw this in. That is Narda of interest only to marine vessels and so forth in the Eastern Pacific. So let's take a look at everything on the satellite animation. First of all, there's Gabrielle headed toward the Azores. There's Umberto starting to get much better organized. And then this is going to be our big problem right here. Invest area 94L tangled up in and around Hispaniola uh, for the moment. But once it clears the island and gets into the southwest Atlantic, just to the east of the Turks and Caicos, which are right in here, uh, it should be all systems go for this to gradually become better organized through the Bahamas. Uh, i tell you what, any cruise ships heading out through this area, well, you're just going to have to endure it, I guess, because it is going to be an interesting few days uh, for sure as this system comes together. You can see most of the convection on the south side of uh, Hispaniola, or the Dominican Republic to be specific, but gradually getting better organized here. And again, once it sort of leapfrogs the island, it looks like it will start to come together. We can really see that clearly on the vorticity signature. A good area of spin and energy here. And again, tangled up with the island. But once it comes over and gets up into the Bahamas, I think this is going to be a pretty big problem here over the coming days. Sea surface temperatures certainly lend credence to that thought process. Very warm. This is where the system is now, just off the map. 29, 30 Celsius all through here. So plenty of upper ocean heat content and just overall warm sea surface temperatures to work with, moving the map extent to the north more. If it is going to come into the Carolinas, the shelf waters have cooled off just below 80 degrees, but, and that's Fahrenheit, of course, the Gulf Stream is pretty wide out here. That's 29 Celsius. Uh, you're talking about low 80s, you know, 83, 84, something like that. So that is plenty warm, and it looks like our system could be coming up somewhere in this vicinity early next week. So yeah, the atmosphere looks conducive. The water temperatures look like they're going to be there. And very importantly too, as we get into the modeling part of the update here, the interaction with Umberto right now looks to be minimal enough so that the two will not impact each other negatively. So Umberto should be pretty strong on its own. And then over to the west would be Amelda. By the way, that is the next name. Uh, and also I want to throw in, I believe that the National Hurricane Center, let me put it this way, I wouldn't be shocked if they upgrade 94L to the next potential tropical cyclone, PTC, what would it be, like 9 or something like that? 
uh, at the 5 p.m. time frame because, again, we're heading into the weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, people are going to be very busy. I've already mentioned that, all the different distractions in our lives. And that gives the Hurricane Center time to put advisories out and get people to pay attention because where this would potentially be coming in is vulnerable to one important aspect, and that is storm surge, and I'll address that as we go forward. So again, the parameters look like they're pretty favorable. Not ideal. We're not in the best part of hurricane season climatologically. Again, water temperatures have cooled a little bit, but by and large, this does have a pretty favorable environment for some modest strengthening, and it wouldn't surprise me to see a hurricane out of it, and that is what the models are generally showing. So let's begin with the global forecast system. This is the GFS up here, and this is from the 6Z run, meaning it was initialized at around 2 a.m. Eastern time. And this is my favorite area of the map uh, to show you things, and that is the 850 millibar layer, or about 5,000 feet up. And you can see the structure of what we are trying to track. That is Umberto, so we'll put an H there. And this is Invest Area 94L, again, tangled up in and around the island of Hispaniola. You can see the curvature of the wind, the wind barbs through here, so there's definitely a tropical wave in there. And if it weren't for the island, this would probably be on its way as it is. So let's check out what happens at these low levels over the next few days. It clears the island, gets into the southeast Bahamas at about two days out. This is the GFS, remember. We'll look at the Euro and other models as we go forward. By 72 hours, it starts to come together, and you can see Umberto over here to the east. I'll just draw your attention to it. Nice area of high pressure to the north, keeping everything kind of squashed down into the southwest Atlantic. No escape route evident just yet, and the two remain far enough away from each other. And again, just look at the difference. This is a great lesson in this tropical meteorology. Very well-defined low-level vorticity signature for Umberto, you can even see an eye in there, a calmer area, and a strengthening, but not quite as well organized. And you can see there is a difference in Umberto and what would be a Melda. And then finally, uh, this is at hour 108, this is Monday afternoon. By Monday evening, it comes ashore near Charleston, just south of Charleston. And that would put a sizable surge into Charleston Harbor and points north from there because of all of that onshore flow. But look at that. That is a little, that's basically five days away. And then there is Umberto sending some serious swell action out. There's going to be a lot to keep up with over the next several days. And then if you move this on, the uh, Imelda to be hangs out, rains itself out over the southeast, potentially a big flood threat coming up as Umberto goes around Bermuda and heads on out into the Atlantic by one week's time. But look at all of this leftover energy in here. Let's not ignore that. That is weather. That's rain and very heavy rain at that. We'll address that later as needed. Uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be a very complex and convoluted several days ahead. So the Euro, this is the zero Z run from last night. So a little bit separated by time, only by about six hours. But a similar evolution, the Euro develops what would be a Melda down here, and a similar evolution coming in uh, somewhere near Myrtle Beach. And you can see Umberto sitting out over the southwest Atlantic, very intense as well. This is concerning on the Euro because it brings the remnants of what would be a Melda into areas where you just don't want to see that. That would spell very heavy rainfall for western North Carolina, southwest Virginia. That's a little bit beyond the five-day time frame, almost six days out. Let's don't worry too much about that yet, considering the anniversary that we are coming up on. But that is something to keep an eye on, how that energy pinwheels in. That could be really important. So this is more than just, oh, there's possibly a hurricane coming. This could have some substantial impacts in a lot of areas. You know, you got the Bahamas are going to be affected first, then the Carolinas here, and, and potentially far inland. Now, those are the global models. What about, and this could literally take an hour if I'm not careful. There are so many different models out there now. I don't even touch upon the AI models, mainly because I don't know enough about them beyond, and you don't really have, hey look, the cat is coming into the view there. You'll see the tail go by. Cat one. Uh, maybe that's a sign. That's hilarious. 
So you have the AI models, and they're so new that, again, this could make this an hour-long video. So I want to stick to what I know best, the global models and then the hurricane-specific models. And as the AI models get more and more ingrained, and we have better ways to display them rather than just the spaghetti plots and so forth, I'm just not ready yet. And again, for the sake of time, why go over every single thing that's available Let's focus on what we know best, and I will start with the HWARF. That's a tried and true, long time running, hurricane specific model, and uh, some of the different hurricane specific models like the newer ones, the HAFs, all right? The HAFs, uh, the A and the B. See what I'm saying? It's confusing already. So let's drop me out and we'll look at the HWARF first. This is the hurricane research, uh, weather research forecast model. So it's a hurricane, tropical cyclone specific model. It's developed just for this situation. It's not a global model. So once the model does latch on, and it takes it a little bit of time, in the southeast Bahamas, Turks and Caicos region anyway, uh, it's off to the races. And our system develops and gets the pressure down to 982. That would do it for a hurricane, no doubt about it. And the H wharf comes in here and makes a landfall in North Carolina. Hey, how about that? At 965. No thank you. I'll move this on out. There you go. Literally within a couple miles of my house. That's pretty much where that is. Yep, not liking that. Not at all. Uh, so that's the H Wharf. All right, let's back this up and let's take a look at the H Mon. And uh, this is another hurricane specific model. Same kind of scenario once it gets its act together in the vicinity of the Bahamas. Not nearly as strong as the H Wharf. And this is a landfall down near Georgetown uh, sometime Monday afternoon. So that would put sizable surge into Brunswick County, Horry County, and, you know, vicinity, right? Now, let's take a look at the HAFs. The, I've already forgotten what that stands for, and you got to select 94L. There we go. So the HAFs, again, once everything comes together, we get a uh, hurricane 982 or so. 983 with a landfall in the low country somewhere in the vicinity of Hilton Head. Charleston is up here. And so this would put onshore flow, get the pointer on here, uh, all across this area, you get a sizable surge with that. Bottom line here, because again, I don't want to, just spending time going over models is not a good use of time. What we're seeing is a consistent signal from the global models, so that's a bigger picture, and the hurricane-specific models they are all lined up showing almost the same outcome. Something approaching hurricane strength, and it's that word hurricane that gets the most attention. I understand that. I've talked about that before. But this is important because of where it's coming ashore. Even a 70 mile per hour tropical storm driving a surge into the coast perpendicular, if it is South Carolina and even parts of North Carolina, depending on where it makes landfall, you can get damaging storm surge and that is the number one concern of mine at the coast don't worry about the wind aspect of this we're not talking about at least hopefully a major hurricane where there's going to be a lot of wind to worry about this is a big surge maker potentially and even five six eight feet of surge is enough to cause a lot of damage so to wrap things up bottom line looks like a hurricane threat more and more possible four parts of the southeast coast, probably the Carolinas. There's still time for adjustments to happen, depending on what goes on with Umberto and other steering mechanisms over the southeastern United States. But remember, everything I just showed you is around five days out, plus or minus maybe six to 12 hours. That is not a lot of time. So what to look for? I think later this afternoon, again, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Hurricane Center puts up the PTC designation, potential tropical cyclone, advisories get put out, we get a cone, we get forecast positions and intensities, and all kinds of other guidance. That is probably coming. I don't have, I haven't asked anybody, I don't know for sure, but my gut tells me that is coming. Uh, if not today, then certainly by tomorrow, I would, uh, I would think. So pay attention, see what happens with this, and uh, don't let all the other distractions that are very much a part of our daily lives, take you away from the fact that, yes, we could be looking at a hurricane threat. So I will probably do 
an evening update based on everything we know and learn from the mid-morning to afternoon models, one of those rare times where I have two videos in one day. So we'll leave it at that, and we'll cover what we need to cover later again today uh, once we get more info coming in, all right? So that's it for me for the morning time here. Have a good rest of your Thursday. I am Mark Suttles from all of us at Hurricane Track. We appreciate you tuning in. And yeah, I'll be back later today, early this evening, with another update, and we'll see what happens from there.